TLO, what's poppin'? We are on kick, K-I-C-K dot com, man. We are not live at this current moment, but, you know, you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. This, if we were live and you happen to miss it, this is where any highlights and things of that nature would go. Uh, this is the Patreon. This is an up-to-date list. I'm going to try to record for this today. If not, what's supposed to be out today will be out Saturday. Um, yeah, but I'm going to try to. Uh, Chicago to the UK, we do got merch. want to thank everybody who did purchase some merch. Appreciate it. Go check it out, man. If you can, you can. If not, that's cool. Um, and this is the Discord. You get me. Plays a big role while we're over on kick and things of that nature. If you want to send requests, you got to do it through Discord. America, American in the UK, 15 British culture shocks. Traveling with Kristen. I don't think you can shock me about the UK, Kristen. I'm going to be 100 with you. I don't believe you can. But, but let's shoot for it. Let's see. I love the UK, but there's definitely some things that shocked me when I got here. And probably the first one. Kristen is clearly one of the best editors on the YouTube platform. Love to see how it. much nature there is. You know, when you think of going to the UK, a lot of us tourists think about going to London, but really the UK is so much more. And being here in Northern England, I am just shocked by the number of parks and cycling routes and just nature that there is if you would have caught me three years ago i would have been shocked at this but now i'm not shocked at this there's way more countryside than there is city in the uk i feel you got your big cities and things of that nature but nature is is top over there in the uk i feel everywhere even in a big city like Manchester but unfortunately with that comes some allergies and it seems like I've gotten allergies for the first time in my life being here in the spring and I guess it's hay fever because a lot of my friends have it as well and from what they've said it's caused a lot by these yellow rapeseed oil flowers that are what kind of seed oil caused a lot by these yellow rapeseed oil flowers that are in bloom everywhere <laughs> so yeah i've been having like all the symptoms i'm sure you know what they are if you had them too like i'm not allergic to anything except jalapeno juice that's the only thing and i'm barely allergic to that but i don't eat it itchy watery eyes and sneezing and stuffy nose and stuff like that so been suffering a little bit from that <laughs> that i didn't expect but fortunately the medicine here is really cheap and like you can get allergy medicine over the counter for like 50 cents or 50p or one pound or something. Now that's shocking. I ain't even gonna lie to you. A country where somebody, where the, where the government wants their people to be healed at a low cost? Something that I'm still adjusting to is how friendly the people are here in Northern England. It's genuinely shocking after two months of being here. I still have. Dang, did you move there or what? I haven't fully adapted to this aspect. Like, I'm still caught off guard when strangers just say, hiya, or the guy at the flower shop is like, hello, love, like as if he knows me. And. It as if he knows me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Uh, to Americans, that, that hello, hello, how are you type stuff, that can be real shocking. I'm from Chicago, though. We surprisingly chicago is like that they'll say hello to you in the, in the city but like out here in florida you would think because i'm in the south they'd be real friendly negative <laughs> they are not friendly it just kind of permeates every level of society from just people walking down the street or out in the forest to the people working at the airport uh, people in shops restaurants and even new friends that you make I've been just so but this is not shocking to me blown away by how kind and generous the people are like people who I've only known for a couple days or a couple weeks and they're like offering to pick me up at the train station or take me to the airport or help me with stuff with with my career and hobbies and 
mentor me in music production and like when's the last time that one of your friends offered to take you to the airport right like it doesn't happen they just be like get an uber but here you got ill friends i sorry kristen your friends are ales <laughs> people are like like what can i do to help you or do you want to come to this house party do you want to meet my friends do you want me to introduce you to these people and i feel like there's no alter 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 like alter ego out there like there's no alternative what's the word i'm looking for there's no alternative motor ulterior motive there it is there's no ulterior motive they're just genuine people over there in the uk that's why i rock with them don't say it's just because i'm a girl <laughs> like it's it's everyone and just the other day i was um having drinks with my friends <laughs> my friends that i've known for like two weeks and one of the guys that was there named mark he was really cool and he left and my other friend was like oh no like mark's leaving and he had just met him the day before and they are two british guys and they had bonded in one day and had become the best of friends and like other guys that i've met that have been friends for two weeks like everyone treats each other the same whether you've known them for two weeks or two months or 20 years the other day i was just walking through this neighborhood called Ancoats, and people were just waving to each other smiling like security guards people sitting at tables and i ended up in this 15 minute conversation with a woman who was just standing outside of a restaurant and that just that kind of stuff just doesn't happen where i'm from coming here to that's why it don't even be feeling like a real place look i say it all the time the uk don't even be feeling like a real place to america there's a lot of stuff that y'all be doing you'd be like am i in a am i dreaming this park some guy passed me on his bike and he's like oh sorry if people apologize for even passing you on the sidewalk so it's kind of funny but I, I really like it i have noticed however that people are also really blunt <laughs> this is most noticeable in restaurants actually I, I can't tell you how many people i've heard send stuff back to the kitchen because it wasn't right the eggs are too cold the bread wasn't toasted enough whatever but it's not like listen on tiktok i do food stuff uk food stuff so i'm already knowing if my bread don't look toasted enough i see it in the comments so they're complaining it's I just that they're that. being very assertive and whereas people do that in the british people don't play about their food man the uk the united kingdom people don't play about their food period so. We're more likely to just kind of suck it up and be like, oh, this isn't what I ordered, but I'll just eat it anyway. Or everyone else has their food, so you don't want to send it back. <laughs> but here, no, people are like, this is wrong. Take it back. So they do like to joke as well and kind of like give you a hard time, especially me, because I don't know what they're it's called banter saying half the time with all of the slang. So if people do that to you, then don't take it personally. I'm also shocked at how safe I feel here. It isn't something that I really thought much about before I left the US, but now that I'm here, like I really just feel so safe. Like not only are there no wild animals out to get you, but foxes. You don't have to worry about guns and even being out in parks and trails. Where are you from, Kristen? You from the hood? <laughs> Would you by yourself? That can be very dangerous in the US and i would never feel comfortable hiking you do look comfortable you out there frolicking riding your bike in nature you enjoying yourself by myself there but here i do and um people say like in my neighborhood they're like you don't have to lock your door here and that's definitely yeah right that will never change for me definitely not the case in florida so <laughs> that you're from florida okay all right now you from this state uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Guns is a thing no matter where you are in Florida. Starting July 1st, you can carry a gun unlicensed. Unlicensed, no training in Florida. I'm here right now. So, tough. Has been shocking in the best way. All right, and we got to talk about the food, you guys. Way fresher. The portions are smaller because the food is real. There's no GMO added. Um, it don't even taste like American food. I... Like, and that's just off the stuff that I've tried that was shipped to me. It's because I am still shocked at how good the food tastes here. I'd just been back in the U.S. for a few months and was kind of just getting used to the tasteless, bland food and the 
kind of not ripe fruits and vegetables. And then coming here, everything just tastes so You're talking about Florida, though. Florida got... Florida has terrible food in general. So, okay. Much better. I found out that the UK is among the top 10 countries in the world with the highest food quality standards. So that's definitely a good thing. Right. But on the flip side, the food also goes bad really fast, which means it's fresher. Yeah, there's no preservatives. There's no stuff that preserves food for shelf life which means it probably has less preservatives, probably less modification. I've noticed that the sell-by dates and the consume-by dates are a lot shorter than they are in the U.S. Fruits and vegetables go bad within a couple days, whereas in the U.S. you can get away with shopping like once a week and the chicken goes bad really fast. Like one or two days, you better cook whatever chicken or meat that you bought. And I also- So in the U.K., you telling me I just gotta shop for the day and not for like shop for the next couple of days don't do anything further actually read that in the uk it's um not allowed to spray the chicken with chlorine which is allegedly a acceptable practice in the u.s so that might have something what the hell they spray chicken with chlorine over here <sighs> to do with it the first day I bought chicken and I didn't cook it for two days and it was already starting to look off. I also read that they treat their animals a lot better here with more compassion compared to the factory farming in the U.S. So that is a really good thing. And I've also noticed that even though the Brits liked their baked goods, that the food doesn't taste as sweet. And that could be because of the recent sugar tax. But then on the other hand, which is weird, I've noticed a lot of foods have fake sugar, like artificial sweeteners in them, which is not so good. So I'm not really sure what the story is there. It's even hard to find sparkling water that doesn't have artificial sweeteners and flavorings in it. So maybe they cut back on real sugar and started using fake sugar. I don't know. They also have- They don't even use high fructose corn syrup over American there. American style pancakes in plastic wrap, which is really sacrilegious. Pancakes should be made fresh but you can find them in the bread section and also in the refrigerated section. But I have not been daring enough to try them yet. Speaking of food, another thing that really surprised me was seeing so many couples together shopping in the grocery store. You wouldn't think that that would be weird to me, but coming from the US, I think I'm just used to one person going because either one person in the relationship more takes on the role of going grocery shopping or even if both people could go it wouldn't be very efficient or productive for two people to go and one person can go so I, eh, I get where she's coming from but like when i was in a relationship we both went together you know what i'm saying because like we're in a relationship but i'm not you so uh, at the end of the day i really don't know what you look for when you go shopping so let me go and you slide too i've thought that it's very adorable to see couples shopping together and it's like really good teamwork you know they're checking out the food they're reading the labels checking the prices and discussing what they're going to buy together and it's like a family affair and for some reason that's weird to me but if you're from <laughs> Hey, Krista, you, you're low-key letting them know how toxic we are in America. We're so toxic that we don't go shopping together as couples. Oh England, you probably think that's normal. The recycling is also really impressive here. I've gotten so used to composting that I don't know how I'm going to go back to normal life in the U.S. without it or anywhere in the world for that matter. There's not that many countries that have this level of composting and recycling, but I think most of them are probably in Europe. But I have five Top different three. recycling bins at my house, and in the U.S. we have one, and like most of that's not actually recycled. So Yo. Yeah, I'm gonna be bad if I ever move to the U.K. If I ever move to the UK, this is one thing right here that I'm going to be terrible at. Because everything just goes in the garbage for me. I don't litter. But I try not to litter. But everything does just go in one garbage can. I don't do all the extra stuff. That's just me personally. I grew up in Chicago. It's not a big thing. 
So here in my neighborhood, they recycle around 70 to 80% of all of the trash. Whereas in the US, the national average is more like 32%. And that includes a lot of trash that's not actually recycled, like trash that they burn or trash that's collected at construction sites and things like that. So I don't know, I, I wish that more countries would invest in greener ways uh, to reduce I'm not opposed to start to learn you know to, to you know start recycling because you know you know something about the footprint is what I want to say but I don't know what the words are to correctly formulate that in my mouth pause uh, but yeah you know use waste and it's just been really impressive here how they do things. A lot of things just seem to make logical sense here. Maybe it's that British sensibility, but even things I noticed like going to the- Kristen, I heard opposites attract and I feel like you can be the yin to my yang. I know that's off subject, but I was just, you know, gotta shoot my shot. You know what I'm saying? Airport where in the US it's kind of a free for all with cars blocking each other and people trying to get out on the streets. Whereas here they just have these little diagonal parking places where everyone can park and drop off people and then be on their way without blocking the road. Are you talking about the airport? So I don't know why <laughs> in the US we haven't done anything like that. Maybe it's for security reasons, but if you've ever been to LAX or New York or or O'Hare or anywhere Miami International or really like any major airport you know what I'm talking about and yeah. I was shocked the first time I got to Manchester and I saw people just leisurely parking in front for a minute dropping off their guests and then I'm not gonna lie at Fort Lauderdale Airport they don't care they don't care that much it depends what time you come if they're super busy they might try to fake care but they really don't care being on their way with no stress they also have a lot of common sense signage around, whether it's road signs or ads that you'll see on a bus stop or on the side of the road or a sign that someone put on the bathroom door or something that's broken. It's kind of like... I'll be there. I'll be there in um, September. So Manchester is one of my stops. <laughs> Manchester, Leeds, Liverpool... Birmingham, London. It seems like the signage is here is just kind of talking to you matter of factly, or if it's something like from the NHS, from the National Health. Talking to you matter of factly. I've never heard that. Health service. Like put together like that. It's broken. It's kind of like, it seems like the signage is here is just kind of talking to you matter of factly, or if it's something like from the NHS, from the National Health Service. It'll be just, you know, some practical information that you might want to know. And there's some way that they go about writing the signs where you just feel like it's very direct versus in the U.S. everything seems like it's marketing to you. One thing that I'm definitely still getting used to is walking or biking on the left side of the road. I just feel a little disoriented all the time and I feel like I look back and forth like 10 times before I cross the street. Yeah, as an American, I can see myself getting like having a hard time getting used to that, especially if you're coming in there driving. It's going to be a tough one. And even your bike brakes are on opposite sides of the bike. So I learned that really quickly. The back brake and the front brake are reversed. So very good to know. I'm also still working out Fahrenheit to Celsius conversions in my head. I think Fahrenheit makes sense, but my friend says it's confusing. He probably has a point. I guess it is more straightforward in Celsius because zero is freezing and 32 is hot. Whereas in Fahrenheit, 32 is freezing and zero is more freezing and 80 or 100 is hot. So you- Oh. You just, I didn't know that was how it was. It, that's pretty simple. Actually, zero is freezing in Celsius. 32 is hot. That makes sense. All right. Be the judge. I'm also getting used to the lack of climate control around here, which is pretty strange for someone from... Yeah, there's no AC. They don't even know what central air is in the UK. I heard. The US, especially Florida. 
Fortunately, there is heating in most buildings, but what you won't find is air conditioning. Maybe in some of the big office buildings and some of the more modern buildings, but not in most houses and not in most stores and even small hotels or large hotels. So that's definitely taken some- I'm not even gonna lie to you. Wherever I stay in the UK when I get there, needs to have AC. If I'm there in the summertime, if I'm like, that's a deal breaker for me. <laughs> Getting used to, even the big department stores like Zara won't have air conditioning. So it's a bit weird for an American like me, but um, I'm adapting. The scary thing is that People didn't need air conditioning here for most of history, but it seems that things are getting a lot hotter these days. So even though people are definitely enjoying the sunny and warm weather, it's it's a bit scary to think of like how warm it actually is in Europe these days. Listen, I will send a window unit from America and use one of the conversion plugins to get right. But what's probably it. shocked me the most is the price of housing here. Now, I know that London is expensive, but I didn't expect the market to be so competitive in Manchester. I've heard that it could be because a lot of people are moving out of London to Manchester in search of cheaper housing. So maybe that's putting some upward pressure on the prices. But also it seems like the UK is in a housing crisis in general yeah. in most of the country. and. That's going on over there anyway. This has to do with a lot of reasons from a lack of building houses to general inflation, population growth, and just higher demand. But I was so surprised at how competitive it was here, even to the point that if you go to an open house, there could be 30 other people competing with you for the same property. And that's something that you would see in New York or LA. I didn't expect that here and the prices were really high the the market's super competitive and it might even be that the landlords and the rental agencies don't even reply to your inquiries which is just crazy and they got so much motion they don't even need to reply that's tough. but i mean manchester is the second biggest city in the uk so there's a lot of people here looking for housing but that is a problem that i definitely didn't anticipate to the degree that it is here but anyway, what shocked you the most when you came to the UK? Haven't been there yet, but none of these have shocked me so far. The most shocking one was probably nothing. I knew them all. <laughs> but, you know, see hello, you leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on to the leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on the post notification bell. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Uh, Kristen, that's your name, right? Kristen, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and hit that like button. <laughs> Get me. Goodbye.